Citizens, it's that time. You're officially in Alert Zone. Welcome to the Alert Zone TV. I'm the Wizard, Uncle James. Um, hope everybody's having a great time, great day, uh, being safe out there. I would love for you to become an active citizen. You can do that by hitting the subscribe button, hitting the bell so you can be notified with drive fire content, giving the video a like, sharing, comment, and all that good thing. Um, if you are 18 years of age or older, Practice your Second Amendment rights. It is not illegal under the Constitution. First off, ladies, I want to say Happy Mother's Day to y'all from the Alert Zone. Um, definitely, definitely to my mom, to everybody's mom out there. To all the ladies out there that's law-abiding citizens that's working a job with no children. If you're paying taxes, you're helping raise somebody's children. So, uh, definitely, definitely. So, I am sitting here. Right now, got the Smith & Wesson uh, MEP Shield 2.0. Put the safety back on. Um, 45 ACP. You know, my grocery store gun. Uh, you know, usually if I'm going to a restaurant, what have you, I'll take this with me. Um, it is the 45 ACP. Got the 45. I got FMJs in there. Uh, I know, I know you guys are gonna tell me change them out and put the hollows in there. I, I am, I am. Um, I just grabbed it because we went and had uh dinner earlier. So, MEP Shield 2.0, the compact, uh, 45 ACP, definitely got the green light on it, you know, the laser edition. I wanted to address something, um, and just say this being on high alert, staying safe. Sometimes requires making maybe I want to I don't want to say uncomfortable, but sometimes making decisions you may not really want to make, but you have to always think about your safety out here. And why? What am I talking about? Sorry about that. The Detroit gas station shooting, where that guy killed one guy and shot the other two because that clerk locked him in the store. We've gotten to a point where I know it's unfair to say to law-abiding citizens, well, you shouldn't be there. What was you doing at this time of morning, this, 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 and that? But sometimes it comes to a point where what we should be doing and what is safe sometimes collide. And what do I mean by that? Those customers was not in their mind in their business. And they lost, the one guy lost his life and the other one, the other two, their lives will be changed forever <laughs> behind what happened. But I'm going to approach this from a different angle about that Detroit gas station, that gas station shooting. And I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all have heard that, heard about that out there. We're going to not only talk about this clerk, but if you remember when I did that video about the Allen, Texas shooter, I pointed some things out in that video and I know some people may have not liked what I said and that and they may have felt like it was a rant, but it wasn't. I told you guys when I started this channel, I was going to connect firearms, politics and the racial divide in America. And sometimes it wasn't going to be pretty. Everybody wasn't going to like it. Um. Just because it's, it's, I don't want to sell a dream out there that something don't exist. You know, it's kind of like my firearm videos, especially, but none of my videos have been edited, but even my firearm videos, sometime when I go out to the range or what have you, you guys see malfunctions and sometimes people have told me, you know, man, sometimes your stuff, you know, give you issues and what have you. And I'm okay with that. And I'm going to tell you why. I understand every day we got people coming to firearms. Hold for one second. Yeah. So anyhow, I was saying, I don't want people to think that just because they buy a particular brand of firearm, it's never going to fail. You know, everything I carry, I feel safe with it. And if it's a malfunction causes my, me my life, oh well. But I feel safe with everything I carry. So I'm never going to be ashamed about nothing I post on here. But I want to get back to being on alert 
And sometimes you have to understand, you have to steer clear of trouble because trouble will find you. That clerk, that clerk did something. I know a lot of people were saying, you know, that the guy was wrong for what he did, and he was. Those guys was in there minding their business, but I want to address that clerk. And I want to address the culture of that clerk. I want everybody to put on their critical thinking caps. For him to lock them in that store, that wasn't his first time ever doing that. Notice something. I'm going I'm, I'm to explain something to a lot of people, and it's going to rub some people the wrong way, maybe. Or uh, maybe everybody may get it. But if you've never been in the hood, if you've never been in black communities that's, that don't have money, I'm not going to speak about the middle and upper class black communities, but the black communities would, uh, was considered to be in the city, impoverished, what have you. A lot of the gas stations and corner stores are ran by Asians, whether they be uh, the, the, what we consider Oriental, you know, the Vietnamese, Chinese, Japanese, them type, or the East Indians, or, you know, the Koreans, what have you. Or the Arabs, because a lot of people don't believe Arabs are Asians. If you know about uh, world geography, all the Middle East is located on the continent of Asia, period, point blank, whether you like it or not. And if you don't believe me, just go look up that Asian hate crime bill and the Arabs is listed in there because they made it clear we Asian. But I want to talk about the relationship between the store owners and the black community these store employees and clerks in the community. These Arabs are very, very disrespectful towards us as a group. I don't mean the individual, but as a group, <clears throat> they love doing it. That's not the first people he's locked in that store. What they fail to realize is everybody keeps saying, well, it was a dispute over $4. You know, sometimes they lock you in the store because you don't let them cheat you out of your money. If you're from the hood and you see this, hit me in the comment section and let me know, am I wrong? Am I lying? A lot of times you go in these places and because you count your change or you ask for a receipt, they get angry with you. They get angry. They'll get on the news when something happened and tell you about how they're so afraid of us and all this other craziness. But then where they come right around us and open these stores up. But that's a different topic for a different day, maybe for another channel. This guy said, I'm going to shoot these people if you don't let me leave. Now, there was no evidence that this guy wanted to leave with the items he was trying to get. According to the news and according to their reports, the argument was about his car declining. They got into an argument. I don't know if the guy threatened to leave, but they got into an argument and he locked the store. Right there. Right there. That's a kidnapping charge, if anything. That was a kidnapping charge, if anything, because he locked them in that store against their will. You can't lock the store when you have one person trying to steal something for $4. He's behind bulletproof glass. So he can talk crazy to this guy and escalate the situation. He sees this guy with a gun and he still doesn't open the door. These guys are begging for their lives. And it cost him. And guess what? The police let him go. Now we're going to talk about how he was operating a store without a permit. You think that's the only gas station that that happens to in this country? Those Arabs, I don't want to see them seem like I'm singling them out. But a lot of them operate businesses without a license. And the only reason that gas station got shut down was because of that shooting. They knew from a long time ago that place didn't have the proper things to be operating. But this points to something else that we need to address about this whole situation. You got to be safe, man. You can't put yourself in harm's way. You can't. When I used to be back home and I used to be out in the streets and what have you and, you know, partying and what have you and coming home. You know, three, four, five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning. I had to get it through my head. There's just certain places I can't go. There's certain places I refuse. If we went out partying at three, four in the morning, we're going to stop and get something to eat. That was just certain places I wouldn't go to. 
just because I was trying to avoid an issue. You already know 2, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, most of these gas stations, especially in the hood, are ain't nothing but death traps. And I'm not blaming these guys for what happened to them because it's not their fault. But this plays into something else that we just got to discuss and I have to be honest about. We have gotten to the point where we are willing to risk our lives giving other people our money. There, right then and there, when that happened, across Detroit and across the country, we should have said, okay, that's it. That's it. That's what these people think of us. We're going to stay out of there. I always advocate that we don't start problems here in the alert zone. On YouTube and GunTube, Second Amendment Media, we always say to don't be the aggressor. We always say that. We don't go around looking for trouble. You know what? We tell you about a lot of these stories to give you a heads up that this is what it is out here and you have to move strategic. Yes, you want to stop after partying 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and get you some zuzus and wham whams before you go in the house, get you some snacks or what have you. But sometimes you have to ask yourself if the place you're going to, is it worth going to? Let's be honest. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to get out of here and I want you guys to hit me in the comment section. The opening scene to the movie Minister Society resonated across the whole country. You know why? At that time, that's what we was going through. It was not, and it still goes on, but it, that the Hughes brothers didn't think of that. They just took the temperature of the neighborhood. Everybody knew that that was the protocol, that you couldn't go in the store without getting followed. You couldn't always be always accused of doing something wrong and what have you. You never got the benefit of the doubt. A lot of times these people wanted to cheat you out your money. A lot of these places that was real popular was real dangerous at the same time. These brothers lost their lives. Well, the one guy lost his life. The other one said he was shot three times. Yes, I feel that punk that shot them should have not only been arrested. His mammy was sitting outside. She heard the gunshots. His mammy should have been arrested, but that clerk should be arrested also. They all ought to be charged with murder. Because if that clerk just unlocks that door, I just saw the video. I wasn't going to speak on this. Shout out to the president of Gun Freak Nation and to the members of Gun Freak Nation that come here and support, man. I love y'all. Y'all never know how much I appreciate y'all. I seen he addressed this, and I wasn't going to say anything about it. I just saw the video. They released the video of them guys begging that man, please, man, just let us out of here. Just let us out of here. We haven't done anything. And he let them stay in there because he was behind bulletproof class. Now, notice this clerk hasn't come out and apologized. His community hasn't apologized because that's standard protocol. For those of you who've never encountered them in these gas stations and these corner stores with their little hostile attitudes, that's protocol for them to pull that kind of crap. And I'm not going to get into the historic relationship between them and us worldwide i'm just saying like in this whole gas station grocery store setting that's protocol that they lock the door when they don't get their way that's protocol that they escalate situations they do that all the time now it costs the guy his life they shut that gas station down all they're gonna do is move to another one. or they'll go ahead and pay the permits when this all blow off and it'll be back open. Just like the food store that George Floyd got killed in front of that called and said he had a counterfeit $20 bill, which we've never seen to this day. We'll be back in there supporting that gas station. We'll be in there smacking our lips saying, I'm going to go to that gas station anyway. And that bitch better not try that with me. We'll be willing to put ourselves in harm's way to try and prove a point. 
let this be a lesson to everybody out there, not only in the alert zone, but in this country and across this world, man. Sometimes you can't put yourself in harm's way because you don't never know what's going to happen. You don't never know what the person behind you is thinking. You don't never know what other people are thinking. Because if we was mind readers, those guys never would have been in that store. I can guarantee you that. And they beg, that's sad. That really, that really hits home for me. Because I know the feeling of that. I went through that when I was really young. I went through that. Of not being locked in the store. Per se, like, them hitting the switch. But them blocking the door because they had a problem with somebody in there. And not letting us out of the store. I've been through that before. I've been through watching them antagonize people and then call the police and then none of us can't leave out the fucking store because the police got us all in there at gunpoint. I'm going to say this again and I'm not going to mince no words. That guy who did the killing, his mammy, and the store clerk all should be charged with murder. You can give her an after-the-fact charge because she drove him away. I mean, that's his mom. I know people going to say, well, what you expect her to do? That's his mama. That store clerk. That bastard should have been charged with kidnapping. And at least first degree murder. And I'm going to tell you why. The minute he locked that door and that guy started telling him, if you don't let me out of here, I'm going to start shooting. And this guy actually pulled the gun out right then and there. He could have let him go. Because he knew that guy was serious. But you know what? He went ahead on and kept that door locked. And they said he kept escalating afterwards. He kept escalating the argument after he locked the door. And he got them guys killed. He stayed behind that bulletproof window and he walked out and he at home with his family. To my people out there across the world, man. Across the world. We got to make better decisions. It is safety is our duty first. It is your first duty, your duty to protect yourself. And sometimes you got to have this and you got to have this. Hit me in the comment section and let me know what you think. Until next time, stay safe, stay on, stay on high, high alert.